God, it's happening. We're doing a supermoon video. All right, cool worlders, we try to avoid it, but everybody is getting into a frenzy about the super blue blood moon, which is occurring this Wednesday. So yeah, we're doing a video about it. Next thing we'll be calling this the super death, ultimate, mega, hyper, ultra, insane death moon from above. So people are asking, will there be giant earthquakes spanning the globe? Will there be tidal waves covering continents? Or will there be werewolves coming out at night to feast upon small children? And the answer to those questions are no, no, and yeah, maybe, no, actually no. All right, so where does this name of the super blue blood moon actually come from? What does it mean? Seriously, guys, this thing is just a hot mess of historical blunders. Okay, so let's just break this down one by one. Super blue blood moon, let's take the blue part first. Question, will the moon turn blue even slightly on Wednesday? And the answer to that is definitely no, absolutely not. Please don't look up at the moon on Wednesday and be like, yeah, it, it does look a bit more blue to me actually, because it, it does not. It, it actually is the opposite of that. All right, so what is this thing then? What is the definition? Back in the day, the original definition of a blue moon was that it was the third full moon in an astronomical season, which happened to have four full moons occurring within it. Typically, there are only three full moons per season, so having four is somewhat unusual. And by astronomical season, what I'm talking about there is just the normal seasons, really, but I'm using the dates of the equinox and the solstice to define them. Right now, we are in between the winter solstice, which occurred on the 21st of December 2017, and the spring equinox, which will occur on March 20th in 2018. And in this astronomical season, there will be only three full moons, not four. And that's typical. The three full moons are January the 1st, January 31st, which is Wednesday, and then March the 1st, right? So the full moon, which is occurring on Wednesday, will be the second of three and not the third of four, or even the seven of nine, so why the hell are we calling this thing a blue moon anyway? Well, for that, we have the amateur astronomer James Pruett to thank, who erroneously wrote in an article that a blue moon is the second full moon in a calendar month. That article was published in Sky and Telescope magazine in 1946, and then later, again, erroneously picked up and popularized by the radio program called Stardate in 1980. In fact, now this erroneous definition has become so widespread that it's essentially been accepted as an alternative definition of what a blue moon is. Okay, so yes, Wednesday's full moon will indeed be the second full moon of the month of January and thus by this erroneous and quite frankly highly misleading term, we could describe it as a blue moon. But you know, why are we calling this thing blue, a color anyway? Okay, so you get the idea that astronomers like myself, you know, we do get a little bit testy about this name blue moon, it doesn't really mean anything, but this is nothing, nothing compared to the astro fire and fury that is brought to bear against the term supermoon. Why do we have a Super moon. Don't get me started. I'm getting you started. Don't get me started. I gotta get you started here. All right, before we can get to the bottom of why this annoys Neil and other astronomers so much, we have to first understand two points. One, what is causing a full moon? A full moon happens when the sun, the earth, and the moon line up as seen from above or below the plane of the solar system. Astronomers call these events syzygies. When the moon is the last one in the chain, then its near side is being fully illuminated by the sun. And this reflects back to the Earth's night side, giving us the appearance of a full moon. By the by, there is another syzygy event which occurs when the moon is in the middle of the chain, and now it's the moon's near side which receives no sunlight. That's what we call a new moon. Okay, we got it, that's point one. Point two is that the moon's orbit around the Earth is not a perfect circle. It does have a small degree of ellipticity. Because of its slightly elliptical orbit, this means that it is sometimes slightly closer to us and sometimes slightly further away. The closest approach is called perigee. And of course, the moon has to pass through perigee exactly once every orbital period of the moon and that is what we call a lunar month. 
All right, so a supermoon really just means that points one and two are happening simultaneously. In other words, we have a full moon, which coincidentally happens to coincide with the time that the moon is on its closest approach at perigee during its orbit. So an astronomer would not call this event a supermoon, they would call it a perigee syzygy. Just rolls off the tongue and try saying that a thousand times over. Perigee syzygy, perigee syzygy, perigee syzygy. Do so you want to know who calls it a supermoon? Astrologers. Yeah, that's right. I went there. Astrologers. In 1979, the astrologer Richard Null coined the term and for whatever reason, I guess it just sounds cool, it stuck and people widely use that term now. Trust me, when astronomers use the prefix super, you know, we're not messing around. I mean, think about a supernova or a supermassive black hole or a super Nintendo. All right, forget that last one, but you, know, you get the idea. These things tend to be worthy of the moniker. I think Neil puts it best when he says, If you have a 16 inch pizza, would you call that a super pizza compared with a 15 inch pizza? <laughs> the super moon is a 16 inch pizza compared with a 15 inch pizza. It's a slightly bigger moon. I ain't using the adjective super, super moon. In non pizza units, and yes, that is the official scientific term, the moon is 7% larger on average during a super moon, and it is 14 to 15% brighter. You know, some folks worry about giant earthquakes across the world or, you know, tidally induced volcanism on the Earth. But, you know, the moon's orbit and mass really are way off the level needed to create those kinds of forces. And this is an idea which has been debunked by seismologists in the past. But yeah, because the sun and the moon are lined up together, there are slightly increased tidal forces compared to usual. But we're not talking about tidal waves here. We're talking about raising the ocean tide by maybe like a few inches at most, typically. All right, finally, we get to the word blood, blood moon in this phrase. And, you know, at last we get to a term which astronomers can get excited about because the phrase blood moon just refers to a lunar eclipse. And eclipses are something, trust me, astronomers like a lot. On the Earth, we get to enjoy two types of eclipses. There's the solar eclipse, which happens during a new moon syzygy, except that the moon is really perfectly aligned to block out the sun. So we get a total eclipse for a short amount of time. Vice versa, the lunar eclipses occur during a full moon syzygy. And again, what's happening is the Earth is just perfectly lined up and blocking out light, which is heading towards the moon. Definitely take the opportunity to see any lunar eclipse you can, but don't panic if you miss one. They tend to occur about twice per year. So whereas during a supermoon, or let's just say it, perigee syzygy, the moon appears a little bit brighter, during a lunar eclipse, the moon appears much fainter because there's so much light being blocked out. But a small amount of light does make its way to the moon, and that light has a blood red color, hence why we call that moon a blood moon. Okay, so why is it red? Well, even though the Earth's bulk is blocking out all of the sunlight, the Earth's atmosphere does not. So a small amount of light can actually filter around the Earth's atmosphere, and actually refracts round and bends and reaches the surface of the moon. But the thing about the Earth's atmosphere is that it tends to scatter blue light very effectively. That's why sunsets appear quite red. So that same red light which makes it to your eyes during a sunset bends right around the Earth's atmosphere, reaches the moon, reflects off, then comes back to give you an ocular high five. So there you have it. So to recap, a blue moon is simply the second full moon which occurs in the calendar month. A super moon is just a full moon which occurs when the moon is close to perigee. And finally, a blood moon is just a lunar eclipse. So I guess an astronomer would drop that whole blue thing because that's kind of pointless and just call this a perigee lunar eclipse. All right, so I have a question that I want to ask all of you guys who made it to the end of this video. So, you know, astronomers like Neil and to some degree like myself, you know, we do get annoyed by these uh, misnomer terms and the overhyping and exaggeration of some of these effects which are going to happen to the moon, for example, on Wednesday. But maybe the outcome that more people learn and read about astronomy or go outside and look up at the night sky makes it all worthwhile. Are these exaggerations uh, worth it if we think of them as a means to an end? Or should we take a really hard line on this and treat it as an example of scientific misinformation that we as scientists and people interested in science have a duty to expunge from the popular lexicon of scientific terms? 
So I really want to hear what you guys think about this. Let me know down below in the comment section. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. We have a bunch of uh, research papers that we need to talk about on this channel pretty soon, which are backing up. So if you want to hear about all these latest research things we've been doing, do make sure you click the subscribe button down below. And of course, click the bell thing to get the notifications. I hope you enjoy the lunar eclipse on Wednesday. And until the next video, stay thoughtful and stay curious. Next thing we'll be calling this the super ultimate mega death hypertron megatron death from above moon with cherries on top. I don't know. <laughs>